Hello everyone, it's Sam Wong again uh, from Finance and Electric Services team. Hope you have a great weekend and I'm pretty sure you're very impressed. For those of you that didn't really do short or any put options, we'll be very pleased with the result on Friday that has a large reversal on all the three major index as well as a lot of stock in the NASDAQ. Um, so just give you a quick recap, take a look at the graph, you know, you, you can see the Dow Jones Industrial Ave, I mean this is NASDAQ. Uh, for five days, actually only down 0.3%. And you can see, um, you know, the first three days is really happening in a downward trend, particularly really, you know, before um, properly um, President Biden's speech, it was actually still at the very steep losses, particularly on Thursday morning uh, when, when the when the year future started at negative um, 800, uh, which have Russia actually invade Ukraine overnight. And then, you, you know, after that, then you really start to rebounding back you know, with all the development of the, on, on the war, um, which actually very dramatic. Um, so I'm not sure if it was surprising that the people were trying to guess what happening, but um, but really, you know, on a weekend it could still have some changes. But I just want to explain to you very quickly about the graph. Um, you know, picture is always easier than thousands of words, um, and you really can't kind of first three days was really even. Uh, you know, particularly NASDAQ is still in a very high pressure uh, territory in the corrections and S&P 400. Uh, 500 and actually we bought it back um, you know so you can see that the 52 we has is 1600 which is about you know we're up to 2500 points away now uh, on Dow Jones you know so in a month or so you yeah, actually since the beginning probably mid of January have been um, uh, you know quite a um, corrections from there and then um, Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, same thing, you know, you can see that you yeah, actually down about 2,900 from a record high. Um, it's, it's a similar picture, but you don't see the, I'm showing a month, uh, which is down still 0.3%. Most of the rebound really happening in the latest action Thursday and Friday. Um, so um, they're really they're showing you uh, uh, the pictures there as well. And then... Um, this is meant to be S and P five. Um, this is meant to be the stock of Apple. So, um, show you a picture of Apple. What happening? You know, you really uh, remember again. Uh, just a month ago, you hit the uh, three trillion uh, mark, which is like one hundred eighty-two dollars. Um, and you know, which is record high here, hundred three ninety-four. And then you kind of slip. Um, so the correction wasn't very sleep. I mean, very steep. I mean, you lost twenty dollars, which is like ten percent of Apple compared to other Nasdaq stock, and also other group stock, which actually one of the one that's called Select Quote. So it was kind of I did mention it in one of my videos, and also one of the other stock I mentioned in one of the video root. They kind of lost ninety percent from the peak already at a very high point of where the stock worth it. And you can see robots as well in last week video showing you also have kind of uh, slipped back and really back to, you know, the IPO prices at seventy dollars for the time the first day they jumped up, but the, for those who actually bought before then, which is mostly institutional investor, they were actually bought about forty two dollars a share. So, um, so at that you know last week when the market was so steep, uh, after reporting the the earnings as well that disappointing earning. It have been continued to slip to forty three dollars, so it's very close to those that prices that most of people couldn't get. But of course, uh, you can also see the rebound back from robots as well, which is one of the pictures here that I will show, like to show you. Um, you know, which actually did uh, did come back. So uh, robots here, you can see that from uh, you know from uh, from a really steep point. I'm um, using one year view because I want to make you feel clear that the view it was 141 and then you really dip down to $43 and and we mean you discount hundred dollars if you do the math right that's lost uh, pretty much uh, you know quite a bit quite a lot of um, you know 80 percent close to 80 percent of the stock to worth it but of course you rebounding uh, and honestly you know from a trend perspective of this you know which I cut it down to this point for Robux if you see June 
I'm looking for when you know we have to look at for for looking at this point. We're only going to be close to March first, right? A couple of days from now, uh, and and three months later will be June, which it will we will actually hit the you know another month of re quarterly reporting, and then they will gear into the second time, you know, the second quarterly reporting again. Um, I see the stock maybe then you know we'll be interested to see if we're back to hundred dollars. But see, think about it. It's 140, right? And then now it's a 50. Take away the average and a half, which is $95. So if by June you hit $95, $50 right now is still very attractive to buy, and that will get you 90% of return in relatively three months time area. So something to think about, you know. And right now, you really want to differentiate the growth stock that all get hammered and give you a very good discount of 75% to 90% rip out. Rip, um, you know, discount or rip off whatever and what you want to use, and you kind of carefully choosing the one out of the market that you want to pick. Um, and then the other one I will show you. So I will go through with the list really real quick before I go to the recap, uh, which most mostly already covered at the first few minutes of this video today. Um, so Dow Jones again, um, Dow Nasdaq was. 0.3% down, one month is still down. So um, relatively speaking, it was kind of back to, if, if this coming week is going to be rebound for a couple more days and then kind of flattening out, you're really catching up a one month, one month low already, um, you know, in terms of kind of nest that, that got caught up because in between month, one month and six months, it was down a lot more than that. Um, so just something to bear in mind. And that's all because of that. As a tapering from fat, you know, to make a history, high level historical explanation very quickly. It's really as a tapering, also looking at the, you know, interest rate going to be rise. Uh, that going to tackle the inflation, which inflation from quarter to quarter, 70% higher, which, you know, with oil price haven't even put it into consideration um, from that perspective, you know, because again, you go to grocery store, you realize that things were a lot more expensive than used to be. You go to the dollar store, what called dollar store, now no longer a dollar. The item have always 25% in a sense, dollar 25 is all due to the, you know, increase of labor costs, inflations, and tra transportation costs, supply chain result issues, and also basic raw material, everything that bought now is at a higher price, and possibly the weaker of U.S. Um, sh uh, U.S. dollars, because you know some of the stuff have to be coming back, coming from China, as an example. Uh, you can notice that the U.S. Ex exchange to um, one China currency have been kind of weakening to six dollar twenty five to six dollar thirty three in the range, which actually kind of hurt. Um, you know, which is kind of five percent differences there. It's kind of hurt uh, really the. You know the importers uh, from the U.S. and that's make it harder to do business. As you you can lie to yourself that most of the stuff if you've not you know made in U.S. domestically is a lot of our items were made in China. So that does have a sophisticated and dramatic you know a long lasting impact if the U.S. exchange rate is weak still to the printing money and also. You know all this interest rate and inflation and whatnot. Okay, next thing is Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's also uh, not not a, not a lot because it's also because of the rebounding for the, for the very you know you can see this rebounding from from really last um, Thursday after sec afternoon section um actually really last couple of hours of the section and then also Friday that have a you know large reversal. Um, so we still have a ways to go to come back, but if you if you do half of this number, the difference between fifty two we high is which is probably fifteen hundred points, then they will be really doing a good. And a lot of uh, Dutch industrial average stock like Disney, um, it, bowling and stuff like that should have gone back up quite a bit. I mean they were really pretty badly hammered, but really nothing wrong with their operations and their results are still reporting pretty solidly. Uh, then the next thing is Apple, you know, which kind of gives you a normal one. Talk about F A M N N G, which is um, Facebook, you know, which is now Mother Words, uh, Apple, you know, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Netflix, and uh, Google. But I'm gonna pick a few of them just to capture in it, so you can get a get an idea at least how these nests have been pressured over the last week or so. 
So Apple from again $183 a month ago and you keep it dropping down to you know $165 and then if, with, if without this rebounding it's really hitting below $160 which I think you know if Apple hit back down to $155 level you can see that was probably the price um, about two or three two and a half months ago level two and a half or three months ago level so which is pretty steep in terms of this correction that driving even a uh, resilient and solid stock that came that kind of pull back okay the other one um, this one I don't put the name there I don't know if anybody recognized so this one is Nef, um, Tesla Tesla again um, I just showed five days but if you look at you you can see the year, yeah, for the year perspective, six months perspective, you actually have lost 29% value. Uh, the highest record high price was 1243, and you had dropped it down significantly. So, um, at one and one point even even lower than eight hundred dollars, you know, it had been rebound back from there. So it's really difficult to evaluate this stock to see how much it's worth. And somebody is saying this stock was way over value. Um, analysts predict only a sign. And give a seventy-five dollars value of the stock net worth you now eight hundred dollars. Why is there some analysts still have a very optimistic view about Tesla and say it worth seventeen hundred dollars? So just to give you an idea, and we currently have you know when I say eight hundred nine, but I I have thought about buying this stuff seven hundred dollars because here's the simple math, right? If you look at some, I again I cannot do the graph comparison in Yahoo tool for whatever reason. But if I could do, I can pull another, um, you know, uh, EV stock to compare alignment with it. Another S&P 500 or Nasdaq stock to put in alignment to compare with. Uh, you can see that, um, you know, if it depends how you look at it. If you see Tesla still consider a growth stock in a, in a sense, well, then you wasn't dropping significant enough at this moment. But because most of the growth stock, again, they were down 50% or more. And if you do it at this point, 800 versus 1250, well, they're down about 30 less percent, right? So I think if I have to buy it in, I will wait to 40% down. You know, 50% is really more, more, more fair and safe from my from my feelings about it. We're given the war is still uncertain, um, but at least at this point, we heard about Friday the good news, you know, uh, Russia in, in, in the talks with Ukraine again, you know. Um, so you may be the war will be stopped at this point at least uh, stabilized and we'll see what the development from then on. Um, so Monday maybe the market will will still continue to pick up futures currently right now still a positive but of course none, none of the market were trading just the after hours continue to push it a little bit further you know at 3 p.m. Um, central time when the market was closed. So we have always have to see Monday in the Asian market will they pick it up then European market open if it still continue to be uh, optimistic about the war and not so much fear and investors start pouring money into U.S. Uh, stock again so uh, so a lot to watch for and the next one you know which is this um, this one um, $210 that's this one is uh, basically Facebook Metaverse so Metaverse has been suffering in uh, in really at the you know and the and and the high end three hundred eighty four dollars and if for those who listened to my video last week I said well you can buy that but I may actually watch for hundred seventy five dollars five dollars to buy in which is probably meaning another ten percent bid up then I'll feel comfortable because at that at one point it was actually over uh, two hundred dollars less on Facebook hitting below that. So, um, you know, sometimes just to think about it, like here, right here, day low, um, you know, it was close to my 175 target, but never hit, it got rebound. So I was still watching for it and wait for it. I have some on hands, and I will look at this stock price for a year and see what next year, if it's going to be a miracle again, and let's say it won't make a $400, which is higher than here, but $300. Well, right now it's 210 you buy it, you know, it's 390 that's still a lot, right? That's still very profitable. And the reason I'm saying that is, the last time last year, when you look at in June timeline or September time, there were time there were, you know, S and P were um, and Nasdaq and that wasn't as much, but facing the correction of ten percent plus very quickly, dramatical. This time it's more dragging, a little longer than last last time, and the market office it wasn't as as high as at this point. But they were um, basically investor panicking because 
saying, hey, stock will on really, really high, it will crash. So they were pulling back on profit taking similar to the scenario right now here. Um, and then surprisingly, I mean, Facebook was hitting pretty bad, so does Apple and other stock. They actually actually did rebound, and, and at that point, if you look back and draft three months from that point, wow, it was actually totally flipped. So Facebook, then if you will hang on to it, you'll have like 30% return. So again, this this company really, if you believe Zuckerberg, then which of course, if they may change CEO, who knows? I, I win a news rumor that maybe somebody step up replacing Zuckerberg. It could be a different story if that happened. But then still driving the, driving the metaverse business, the WhatsApp, I mean, whatever fundamental Facebook, I mean, they still have a way to mar advertising, marketing, and make money off of it. So it's a very, um, you know, unless there's some really large competitor, which you knew that in the past, these companies will buy them out. So then it still be a single source of uh, marketing, uh, um, you know, um, means for a lot of companies. So I really very look forward to this stock and see if it will hit it back down to $300. I actually bought it pretty high, you know, you know, in my stakes as well, three hundred dollars, and then I bought a little bit at like two hundred fifty range, if you will, to kind of dilute, just like the strategy I just shared with you guys. Um, the next one, Netflix as well. I'm planning to buy more, uh, because really, again, if they're really good video or movie out there, I mean, you're gonna bounce back, and this is actually seven hundred dollars, and just like if you use this to compare to um, Tesla, right? I mean, 350, which is where they hit at one point, you know, here, you know, February 24th, they actually were 50% discount away from the high end. So that's why if Tesla, you do 50% discount, it's 1254, let's say 1300 to 650, right? If I give them 700, say I'm buying 700, then I already give them a premium of the fair value, which is half of that number for consistency from the market. You know, let's say this is more macro driven factors. Um, and you just do the math, you see within the range, right? So why not they are, I mean, Tesla still doing a little better than compared to the FA and MG, all these arrangements. Apple definitely still on top of doing very, very well compared to all the FA and MG, if I put it together to flip how much they have. And Amazon, obviously, also come back down quite a bit, but still a very, very solid stock too. Um, you know, they're really down about like Apple range, just 10% from, from the high end. Uh, the others, you know, the other stop bowling, you know, I have always talked about bowling and I just don't, I personally, I just don't understand why it would hit even below $200. But again, that's just the macroeconomic factors. This stock have been, you know, like a roller coaster and during the pandemic was as slow as $90 and it driven back to $150 and stay in there and dry back a bit. And then you hit to $250, stabilized quite a bit around that range between 225 250 and then when the market come back down again it will become 200 to 225 range up and down you can see, you can pull one month range of bowling you can see them just within 200 225 dollars range which is 10 percent and you can see this one in particular right i mean six months it is down about 10 percent which is really within the range i just mentioned it to you um so on the long run again when when the market uh, business reopening, you know, I really look at this stock to be going back to this fifty two week high or even over that, like three hundred dollars. But have to be patient. I, I if I have the bet, I would say Meta worse will be recovered faster than Boeing. Boeing is a little bit slower moving stock, but full times course of time, you it will go back up. You know, and you know people need to fly the plane, want to go everywhere. And Boeing is one of those companies with long history and the technology for building aircraft and defense. I took um, some defense stuff for the government. Um, then the next one, Carnival um, CLL. Actually, want to show it to you that obviously last week wasn't a good week for them. They pulled back a little bit uh, with the war going on. People not going to travel. <laughs> Probably worry about to get shut down, so um, so that and the airline actually pulled back quite a bit. But then you can see that um, you know they're pretty consistent. They're staying around that dollars when it was no low, it was sixteen thirty two, but it rebound way away. So in between the two point nineteen dollars, that's where they were last week. If you look at it, you were like like right here. You will get opportunity to buy in if you wanted to, and then if not, then just wait. I might 
average is $23, just to be totally transparent. So I'm actually pretty close. If it wasn't because of this market flip down, you know, you actually will have already made money and possible return again. Uh, and I still look at the long term prospect, $31, you know, for those who listen to my video. And you know that um, you, you really not last year, you know, you look at the high end of 31 and P pandemic where that were really long. They have revenue, the revenue have grown uh, compared to last year. It's already like 3,000, 3,000%, three times more. And then, although the profit is still reporting a loss at this point because the capacity issue pandemic was not still not fully recovered, but this just like for forward looking that six months from now in summertime, you know, if if all this stuff will resolve the, you know, right now the whole week focus was just war. If we get over with that and you can stabilize and then uh, you know and then in March we're looking at the asset you know the interest rate increase if Fed have a good news they're not going to rise 0.5 but 0.25 just a quarter the market definitely will have favorable on that then the market will move in that and they come to the also momentum of um, earnings reporting you know a corporate um, uh, window dressing so then all this good stuff will drive the market so from from my perspective, sharing with you Facebook, um, you know, um, whatever you look at in the June timeline, you could potential at that then we'll perfectly fine again. You know, market was rebounding between this number I'm showing you with the fifty two we high, so you still profit a lot from that perspective. Perspective, if you will, if you dare to buy anything right now, and the market continue to move along in the three months timeline I'm share with you. But for day to day right now, you have still have volatility still play a lot in a row and it's still going to be the challenging. We don't know what happened to what is in the mind of Putin and how how is it going to play out. So, And then the, the other stuff I want to share with you, robots as well. I mean, you know, I bought quite, I bought some. I'm looking at this one for long term potentials. I'm thinking about your Minecraft was bought up by Microsoft. This one is actually have even more people to play than Minecraft. So, um, unfortunately, last quarter did not report in very well. But then you can see the timeline on this one. That's I'm looking at you know June timeline. If things will recover and things will get back with the momentum with the growth start again, well, you could fairly help how about the hundred dollars. But we we'll see how you. I mean, even if you don't hundred, let's say go back to seventy five dollars. Well, that's just fifty percent return. At this point, you buy fifty dollars. Just something to think about. I think investor always have, especially retail investor with small investor. We don't have a lot of money to play with. We buy growth stock because we hope you grow. So when the market totally, you know, pull back and then growth stock will basically have much harder hit than the index, which is like, <laughs> like I told you, a lot of these stocks will wipe out ninety percent off where they are if the, if you use the fifty two week high number. So that tells you you're really scary. So you have to pick the one that's not gonna be bam robbed, which which go to the selection. You have to have faith and trust about the management and the and the opportunities in the future for this company to have enough cash to get them go through these challenging times. Well, you then you will see that you know you'll be patient for year you know year or so, or maybe even six months where the market totally flop and improving in summertime then you actually could have sold the stock. But at that time, your mentality will change because everybody can tell you, oh, you will go up, you know, further, further, and things look great, right? Then you wouldn't sell. So one of the key principles by investor is you got to look at your lockdown, your losses, right? You got to look at your risk and your preference to determine what you want to do. Why not for me is these stocks are cheap enough. If cash is a king and you do have cash because... You bought it maybe even earlier in that which the market haven't uh, beat up bad enough, right? Then you would not make money, right? But you have to wait. And so, you know, that that patience will pay off sometimes and you have to pick a stock that is actually working for you and, and solid. And the other last thing I want to show you obviously is give you an example of what I just told you as a persuasive story really is if you look at oil and gas company if you look at a year ago on oil and gas this stock I don't know if you can guess but Shell it was really struggle I you know if you pull it up if you pull up the symbol LDS dash A and you look at it check it out with the graph by clicking five day one month whatever you look a year ago the losses was 
so you know you really gave your return thirty percent. You really depend what point what point you buy in it because you could have benefit even more than that. The shell stock at one point it was dropping unbelievably from where probably they are at like at that point fifty five dollars or or sixty dollars range dropped to twenty three dollars, which is a really record low for shell. And you can see if you have bought it at that time and hold on to it for a year, your return is hundred percent. Just one year. You pick a right sector, right energy, one right sector, which is energy. At that time, everybody said it's bad. You make that money because people will fear about pandemics. People will fear about the economy. People will, uh, you know, start to get laid off. Unemployment rate start to get high in U.S. Right. So think about that. And then, you know, and then share from just another perspective, just to compare. They are as well same thing. They were go. They both of them were rebounding for this week, uh, because of the war, right? The oil price really jacked up to over hundred dollars on the WTI at one point. Um, and um, you really see that if you look at year, you will give you all this type of return that you haven't seen before. And then one other one I want to touch base on, which I did talk about here, Leon. Uh, H Y L N. Um, the stock was kind of disappointing, really, from a perspective. You clip one year, you will lost kind of forty percent of the value. But this stock I've told you before, and for those who listen to my video, it was fifty two week high now, seventeen dollar. But really, if a, earlier than that, which is a year ago plus, where they were going through spack, they were actually as high fifty two dollars. And fifty two dollars stock, and you look at a year plus high, uh, that's really the peak of a lot of the stock that go through spack. And at this point, you look at where they are at. This stock was actually last week. When the market was really bad, so if you look at five days, you click on it, you will see that it was actually as low as three dollar thirty three. In fact, that was just happened on Thursday before the market reverse and split. So that was also before the announcement. So what they did is they actually did the announcement after the you know, and that day where the market Thursday morning was still down, um, it wasn't doing very well. I mean, people were panicking, and the stock was actually from four dollar ten cents. Drop it to three thirty when the market opened. When the futures are down eight hundred points, uh, it was like three dollar thirty. But then it started rebounding. So you probably don't get that price. Probably three fifty eight or three sixty is what you could have get, and now it's four twenty. Um, so they have a really good. They actually have a good earnings um announcement from the revenue perspective. Earning per share per share is still operating a loss because of the R and D research and development. Um, so they still have ability. They still have the salary We're trying to get more business. Which if I were them as a CEO of how will we we strengthen my marketing team? So I'm not going to focus a lot on R and D. I don't think I need to put that much. If I'm already leading edge of a company, I know I'm the best. I have to scale slowing this down instead of focus on getting more business. Cause if I don't have money, I don't have cash, I don't have revenue. I'm not gonna survive, you know. And this company has already been out there about two years, right? But same perspective, you have to look at Tesla. And if you would have gone by the first five years Tesla, right? I may not be making good comparison, but if the stock market succeed in 2025. Then you would just like a story of Tesla, which the first five years they were suffering. They were make no money. The stock was volatile. They wasn't even making, you know, losing money and up and down a lot on this stock until they start to get the tax credit, start to say things change around. They have fracture in Shanghai. Things were doing bad and building exceptional. Then start to get contract and so on. So. I really look forward to this company have put the string together, get the right people management team together, understand their priorities, and focus on 2022. If they can make it and also be able to commit what they already deliver, plus then the stock should gone back down to ten dollars. Should gone back to ten dollars. If you look at Yahoo Finance today, they will say the stock is undervalued, which is FYI. So, but I do want to give you a post on that. And then one other one I'm also fo focused just pick one of the Chinese stock. This one the biggest one, Alibaba. Alibaba, I will actually touch base like later after the recap that I give you quickly in a couple of minutes. Um, so that you can get a perspective. But oh, but this stock, unfortunately, in a week they announced earning wasn't too well. So with the market actually tanking, is make things worse. So they were down to hundred and eight dollar. I actually personally think. I always look at this and I think if this stock goes down to $100 below, it's a buy. But 
for some odd reason have been up and down. Every time they're down to a certain level like this, you won't believe it, they will rebound in 20%. So, some, so I would say if you want to take a risk and only for short time purposes, you got to do a stop loss at $100 um, or $99. You will buy now and sell at 120 plus. That gives you what um five percent right, and you may be really short. If next week the market momentum is positive, uh, with Chinese not going to say attending Taiwan that, that that type of tension, then you could be have um really pushing it up, okay? Because there's some fund managing actually looking at Chinese stuff to hedge about what's going on with Russia right now. So, um, I just want to leave it with that and let you know, you know, um, you know, and I'm keeping you one of the uh, nest that. Um, chart here so you get the idea how how things looking um uh, you know over the, over the weekend i'm really this week the futures right now is positive but you you know future can change anything until monday when the, when the stock market start to converse in asian market in europe um so i'm getting really really quick highlight we can focus last week was the war again um equity asia equity pair losses and investors lost um appetite and uh, you know, for the risk, pick it up. Tokyo fell 0.8% after trading around 1.3% market lower Monday. Global stock switch between gain and loss after U.S. President Joe Biden and Russia and kind of Putin will have a confrontation talk through this war. Um, you know, and the gain on Wednesday after S&P 500 dropped into corruption trade in Tuesday sections as investors said the latest development in Ukraine-Russian crisis. But that was just happening in the morning. Unfortunately, it slipped in the later of the day. So they're trying to test and we bought in it with the heat in the drop. TJX company fell 5% after reporting fourth quarter. We saw them miss on top of bottom line. It's pandemic index rising costs and supply chain disruption. One of the studies you can consider looking at is Macy. To, and Macy have gone down even more than 5%. <laughs> so 20 plus percent from the 52 week high. You can take a look at that, but I'm not telling you to buy it at this point right now. But uh, something to pay attention to. Because if you want to buy retail stock, you want to compare with Longstrom, um, Gap, ANF, and you know all these kind of stuff to pick one. And I think Macy is a good one. If I have to pick, you know, all the wheat grocery company, then I would say, well, Coca. You can still look into it for those who don't have that much money. Otherwise, Costco definitely pay close attention to that one. But the more, of course, Costco is really, really. I mean, during pandemic, they are the winner, and they have gone up so much. You know, over five hundred dollars now. So, uh, and then the market rebound. Um, Thursday future open with Dow Jones down eight hundred point due to fear invasion overnight from Russia to Ukraine. Market rebound. Uh, some loss in the morning. Then President again announced Thursday wider sanction aimed to further cripple Russian economy. And since then, the market started to flip. Uh, really end up a positive territory on Thursday. And with the market dra dramatic reversal, S&P rose more than 1% in their four-day sleep and mid worries over the escalating crisis. The Dow also ended in positive territory. ETSY report fourth quarter result late Thursday, the big estimate, but the first quarter welfare outlook came in below expectation. So the shares actually sour 17%. Though early Friday because it's the good news because ETSY also got beat up from this, you know, um, you know, to acetate and war pressure, you know, in the, since you know mid January, Dow Jones future reverse higher Friday. Russian military unit reporting end of the Ukraine capital. Um, so um, some other reporting as well on Friday, Thursday, Friday. Block which is simple SQ report fourth quarter result that being on top and bottom line and delivered by the expected guidance. Uh, seeing shares more than twenty six percent higher. Beyond meat which is simple BYND fell more than 9% after surprising wider than expected losses. The weaker than expense sanctions are payable with resuming bullish back on stock. So S&P again clocked out from correction and allowed reversal of the previous day. There's a lot of shorts and options that cover and market pick it up. So the market celebrated the market rate. The central bank using Ukraine situation justified inflation and May not raise as may not raise as anticipated because uh, for those you already know that while well, the market has been rebound, which is a great news, but for the next thing you will know, then then you know, central fat is going to say something. So that so that is a potential march, which 
the market should absorb the news and, and reflect it at this point, in my opinion, about raising the interest rate of 0.5%. So if it doesn't happen, which because of the Ukraine, the war, the uncertainty, then actually the market may we possibly like that news and then actually drive it higher. So since I'm not a policy maker, I cannot tell you if that can happen or not. Because it's always bad, right? There's always both sides. Some sides saying it will happen. Some sides say it will not happen. But um, one thing I do and definitely can tell you is the part of the inflation that will be resolved, you know, eventually is if the global uh, GDP, go, you know, going down, so people will not spend as much, then, you know, then that is it. That's one reason why the interest rate was raising, so that there's not so much money on the, you know, on the side or market, people is not spend as much. Now you can argue what if it doesn't work, right? <laughs> so, in particular, oil prices going over $100 per barrel, which is out of the hand of Biden. Uh, the market also more nailed, you can tell now is more narrow and clear silver line, like for example, company that pay dividend, right? And every company that raised price because of the inflation, you know, which are good excuse like Costco is one of those example, grocery company. They say, well, stuff coming in more expensive, I need to pass on the consumer. And the company that have greater future revenue guidance, which is not a circle go start at this point, but the company that continue to very resilient and say they will do better this year out coming off of pandemic, right? And then I look forward in this case will be the uh, the travel and entertainment stock, right? And you can see the gamble stock actually quite rebound quite a bit, you know, in the previous week too. Um, the cushion against the Russian Ukraine conflict, investing legend Mark Mobus recommend trade a lower on gold, which you can see gold are gone, gone back up over 1900. Chinese equity, which means that's why I showed you the Alibaba, even though you know it was announced put it back and got hammered in other emails, emerging stock. So let me give you some more element and information about Alibaba so that you know um, what's going on. If you're interested, you can look into it. Um, this is one of the more largest, um, you know, um, Chinese stock. I mean, I to talk about Pindodo, which Pindodo PTD at fifty one dollars at the moment, and uh, BID to Baidu, you still got beat up at um hundred fifty four dollars, but he actually the last week was was at hundred sixty three, and also uh you know Billy Billy, which got really really bad beating up now, only thirty one dollars. Um, I bought it about forty five dollars, so I'm still losing money on that. But the stock was actually one hundred twenty, uh, at the peak, so. You know, when I see forty dollars, I'm saying, "Well, wow, that's a big discount there too." So I bought a little bit. Uh, so hopefully we will rebound back. But and uh, and at the same time, I know Billy Billy at this moment still not making money. So so that's why always the differentiation between why I share you this with some of these other smaller growth stock. Alibaba indeed have revenue; they were making money; they have profit. Okay, it's just a matter of whether in the future guidance are they going to do better or not. So. Their stock um, at 50 will had $252 at that time. If people will recall and talk about Ant Group, which now, of course, it didn't make it happen. It wouldn't be part of the Alibaba and go on IPO. So then, um, you know, the stock from that point start to slip. And then with, you know, government regulation and whatnot, then the stock continues to slip and do worse and get some fines. Um, so uh, and then also the delisting story that you know that you probably heard about, which lately no longer mentioned with the market of the tension, things go back enough. <laughs> so um, so then you know if why right now it's just at the point where you was really low. I mean, fifty two we low was hundred down two. See you see the hundred dollars mark is exceptionally important. If it doesn't, if it break through. It probably will continue to go down, but if it doesn't break through, I mean the support that's always have seen. If you can pull this Alibaba and look at the chain yourself, um, you will notice that you always rebound around the level. You just don't break through, and you and the next time after you rebound from the hundred lush, you always go back to about hundred twenty dollars. The next thing you know, so the third quarter earning with twenty twenty two, uh, is and also went from miss analyst expectation. Uh, earnings per share is about seven dollars sixty cents Chinese YMB, down from twenty nine thirty six in third quarter twenty twenty one. So that's significant, really significantly lower. Revenue is two hundred forty two point six billion YMB, up nine point seven percent from third quarter twenty twenty one. Net income 
uh, Chinese GDP 20.4 billion, down 74 percent from third quarter 2021. Profit margin still 8.4 percent, which is still good making money. It's down from 36 percent in third quarter 2021. So none of these numbers actually represent you know really good. I mean, really bad news, right? If you think about it, looking at that, but that's again is already passed. So we need to look at the future. And the future earning per share, you know, you still expect that the company to grow and will be have a higher revenue this year. So, um, so again, um, to stop, you just have to think about it. If if you believe the one mark, uh, mark Mobus just telling you, you know, part of the hatch is to buy Chinese stock. Then this is one of them that I laid out to you. I I know a lot of institutional investor holding this one. Um, you know, maybe not as much a Pingdo do or Baidu, but. Uh, and Billy Billy, so um, I'm giving you this one, and I think uh, something to think about, you know. And uh, you know the P ratio twenty eight sixty three, which is really not bad. Um, again, things can change over the weekend. Right now, what I need is the Russia is now up to talk again, and there's also pressure in Ukraine government. Uh, interesting time, but as I previously said, this enormous uncertainty about how bad situation will be in Ukraine. And what impact we have on the supplies of oil and gas? Uh, unfortunately, you know that's a massive if. So I really can't tell you, right? I mean, you know, but uh, I can tell you rationalize it. What if that happened? Why not, right? Washington produces about ten point five million barrel crude per day, or roughly eleven percent of world supply, according to U.S. Energy Information Administration. It means Europe will have to complete <coughs> complete with global buying for additional LNG cargo, which will drive prices significantly. U.S. LNG report rose by more than 3 billion cubic feet a day in 2021, versus 2020 allow for to average 9.8 BCF a day in 2021. All things being equal, LNG export growth is set to continue this year and next reaching 11.5 BCF per day on the average for 2022 and 12.1 BCF per day in 2023. According to EIA projections, again, these are different me from, from the source I just told you. I don't make it up. And also, um, you know, you got to understand they're also based on the demand supply and also the weather. So the weather have a main key there. In, you know, uh, my understanding or the media tell you, which I don't know, but, but I assume it's right, is we are getting a very, very cold weather. So you need more <laughs> you need more energy to burn and keep yourself warm. So that's one of the reasons why the prices are up. Uh, it's really difficult to say if the oil price will continue to surge or pull back to eighty dollars. And LNG went down from record low under two dollars per unit in twenty twenty record high fifty six dollars in October twenty twenty one. So if you think oil price will will surge, then you can buy some oil stock like Shell, or whatever I just show you, and you buy it and look at the portfolio. But think about it, right? Let's say hundred twenty dollars per barrel. Why not hundred? So twenty dollars rate. So your stock could be fifteen percent. It's not normally not one to one exact. So something maybe you can still consider. But you also have to think about the downside. You can flip it down down to eighty dollars a share, which means gives you a you know, twenty percent lower your stock than then ten twenty percent again. So it's a fair game. Um. So it just depends what you believe in, and you can take that scenario into your portfolio. You know. Um, just to give you some more additional information, uh, before wrapping up the video, Chevron was up 37.656% year ago, Exxon up 38% year ago, Oxy, Occidental Petroleum, OXY up 40%, BP up 25.02%, and Rota Shell up 32.19% compared to last year when energy prices were low due to pandemic and weak demand. It's also tell you that. The stock can rebound if they are solid over the course of time, right? So, but you have to be patient, not the day trade, right? So I never recommend day trade in my video. Um, so I'm interested to see how Metaverse, Facebook, which is FB, and Robots, RBOX, will be from a year from now. So a year from now, I will show you again the scorecard KPI. See, see how these stock I have looking forward to. Uh, position and I hope the market will continue to sustain and because it's showing resilience and even if some stock were down you you know there's always still uptick and I picked the right stock and share with you have a nice and wonderful week hope you're happy and things are going well and with your family and everybody healthy and uh, your goal for 2022 will be ha will be succeeding and happening